Hi, just a very quick uh, review and look at this six decade resistance box. And this is a bit of kit which basically every lab should have. You shouldn't be without one. And I'll link in uh, up here and down below a video I did looking at a uh, six decade one I built when I was a kid. And I've, I've still got that uh, original uh, unit. The amazing thing about this is that you can now get these dirt cheap. You can get the, this six decade one I've got uh, for like like uh, normally 27 Australian dollars delivered uh, from China, but like it's under 20 bucks at the moment, I believe, like on special. And the five decade version of this, I believe is like slightly under six dollars on special, like 60% off or something. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. So I thought I'd look at it. Now, this one actually uh, has 0.1 ohm. So 0.1 ohm increments uh, and then 1 ohm increments, 10 ohm increments, 100 ohms, uh, 1K increment and then 10K increments. So it goes from uh, 0.1 ohms up to... Oh, nine, 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 nine. Well, you could dial it in, okay? So it doesn't go up to 11, unfortunately. Very special because if you can see, yeah. the numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board. But basically 0.1 ohms to 100K here. And well, I would have preferred like to have one ohm to one meg, that would have been uh, more useful. Like you don't really need 0.1 ohms, um, especially at this power level. I'm not sure what power level it um, actually is. We'll find out when we open it up. But anyway, at this price, you get what you get and you don't get upset. Now, of course, you've got two binding uh, posts here and this is probably the biggest letdown of this. But as I said, for the price, well, these are the cheapest, crappiest looking binding posts I've ever seen. And you'll probably want to replace these. Not only do they not have a banana plug uh, in compatibility on top, they don't even have a hole in the side to put a wire through. So I consider those pretty useless. I'd be swapping those out uh, as soon as you get one. But hey, we'll give it a go for now. And the box is probably like the cheapest plastic I've ever seen. But once again, for the price, I don't care. The interesting thing is though, these switches really feel like, you know, decent quality. There's a nice snap and a click uh, to them, but I haven't hooked up a meter yet, so I don't know if there's any like jiggle in those. Let's try it. Uh, what's going on here? I've got that set to 90K um, and I'm getting 45, 0.38 Don't tell me they've got that upside down. It's like the four on top like, like Like seriously, okay, I'm gonna put all zeros on top. What the heck? No 55 ohms like what? The way these Decay Resistance boxes work are that they're usually in, like, completely in series. So the highest one is going to, uh, you know, dominate, obviously. So this should be, according to this, 55.5555555K. Uh, um, and I'm getting 55 ohms? Uh, what? Okay, so let's change by one ohm here. 56, 57, 58, 59, 60... And it should go back. Okay. You know, it's almost as if like these three top ones don't matter, but they do. They go, sure enough, it goes up by 100 ohms. 200 ohms. What? It's like some of the. What? Are some of these upside down and some aren't? I. What? This is cursed. I. What? Sorry, I just realized that this video may be triggering to some viewers, so I'll remove that. Okay. Yeah, I. I think my original. Uh, interpretation was correct. Sorry about the glare on the knobs here. It's all really hard with the angles and everything. Um, 000 555 gives me zero. Um, so it's, yeah, it's like these three are sort of like upside down compared to these three. Um, is this like an episode of Stranger Things or something? What the? Okay, so we're dealing with contact resistance here, right? So I can actually rel that out. So we go up in one ohm increments. Okay, now we're going up. Okay, now we're talking. <laughs> this is just ridiculous, though. I mean, seriously, anyway, it's pretty bang on with the ohm ski and 30. So I'm not sure what the spec of this thing is. So we're good to go. Now, up here, we should be able to go 100. <laughs> 200 and 300. I'm going to have to relabel this. I wonder if it's just my unit. Sorry, I've only got the one unit. 
I don't have multiple units to actually test this. And I think that's actually molded into the case. So they haven't just done a cutout here. And these knobs look like the fluted shaft variety. So I think they're just gonna, I think they're just gonna lift off. Oh, don't like that. That's not coming, it's coming up, but it's not coming off easily. Damn. Oh, let's actually do the wiggle, 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 yeah test and see if, see if anything changes. No, it's pretty good. No, it really stays inside that indent really well and it doesn't, yeah, and it doesn't uh, change until you snap over. So that's really good. If I try and lift that knob up, it's actually springy. So it's going to be interesting to see inside. Aha! Not only was I completely wrong about that knob, I just assumed it was a fluted shaft. It's not. So you can guess which one is the one that I, um, yeah, oops. Uh, and we know how they get the cost down. Look at this. Interesting. It's just bare copper PCB like that, like just bare copper. There's no plating at all. So that's pretty how you're doing. So it is built down to a price. But interestingly, look, they've got a little 0805 resistors in there and they've got an unusual arrangement. Usually you would have 10 resistors and you would have like a single tap off, but they've got this dual um, wipe arrangement here, which they can get away with five resistors per tap. And there we go. There's, there's the wire going off to the uh, binding post there. So it looks like to change the binding post, we're going to have to get this whole board out and we have to disconnect all of these. That copper's just going to oxidize. So look, you can see it over here already. But if there's enough force in here, it'll wipe through. Like you can see the you can see the white mark on there already. You see both white marks across there. So, you know, but still, uh, it's pretty how you're doing. But what do you want when I, like I even said, like the five uh, gang one of this, I can currently get this for like six bucks delivered. Delivered. It's insane. Seriously. And that one I butchered there, you can see the ball under there. So that's how they get the indent. On the ball just goes in and then it looks like they've got a little spring on the back of that you can see the ball physically spring out and then into a notch on the back of uh, the knob there so yeah that's interesting so that's really good um but yeah it's, <laughs> this is how they get the price down it's all just you know stamp metal and bare pcb and there's not your traditional uh, switch so like you know the traditional switch housing and the through hole uh, you know pin connections and everything else so that's how they got the price down to a bare minimum so I'm just wondering is it a matter of like having these like if I take them off and actually flip them around install them in the R have they been installed in the wrong orientation so there's the ball arrangement and got a little spring there yeah so there you go that's all part of the molding and they've also got that in there for the uh spring and the ball bearing so you know like it's i really kind of like it the only problem is the uh plating really or the lack of it and also these screws are just uh self tappers into uh plastic there so no thre metal threaded inserts for your five bucks or your 20 bucks but you don't expect that so yeah check it out like if i put them all on zero here like this Okay, and I flip them over, you can see that they're actually in different, like the short one is like up the top here. So I'm wondering, can I like just unscrew these and rotate that around and fix that problem? Have they just installed, like I can't understand why, you know, you wouldn't, why they wouldn't all match like that. I think maybe some, maybe the person who's installed has put this on backwards. Will I, I haven't thought about this arrangement yet, but if I flip it around, that might solve it. And the shaft is uh, flattened like that, of course, so it can only go there, or it can only go like that. So I'm going to flip it around, put it back on. Will Bob be my uncle? And yep, that seems to have fixed it. So zero, 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 five, five, and zero up here. So this is the only one I've changed. And if I change that, we should get 10K, and we do. And yep, and we go up. So... I reckon someone at the Decade Resistor Box Factory has installed those upside down. And Murphy ensured that I got it. Um, but, so yeah, I'm going to go change those. So great, that fixes that problem. And the other interesting thing is, is that, well, what's to stop you 
from simply like because I really like this housing. It's really good. I really like the uh, the switch arrangement. Feels absolutely fantastic. You know, I of course the uh, lack of uh, plating on here. But um, if you want to up the resistor rate, this would be great to modify. You could simply desolder these and solder in your own. Like you could put in like you know, it, like there's plenty of room in this box. There's a ton of room, right? So you could like solder in like five watt resistors or something. Um, I, like you could have a high wattage box, no problems whatsoever. So you can mod it. And you know, if that's the case, it's worth it just for the box. Of course, you you know change over the binding posts, and you've got these nice knobs and everything. Looks fantastic. It feels fantastic when you turn it, and you can put turn it into a high wattage box and as much precision as you want. Oh, you know, you usually don't want better than 1%, so you just go buy 1% jobbies, no worries. All right, so you might be wondering how this uh, dual wipe arrangement here works, how you can get 10 different resistor values with five resistors. Well, you might notice that four of them are between two of the contacts like this, and the fifth one is actually from the common. So, of course, these are all in series like this, so it'll snake out like that and around and around, and that one goes over there and through like that. So they're essentially all in series, but this particular one here, they they are in series as well. But this one here, okay, it's on the zero position at the moment, okay? See, this is where it comes in. So it goes through here and straight out, okay? So it's, it's short-circuited this whole arrangement, so it's zero ohms. But if I switch that to one, right, so the position one, whether or not it's 0.1 ohms, 1 ohm, you know, 10 ohms, 10k, or whatever, it makes no difference. You just change these values. These are all the same. This here is actually the 1 ohm range, so these will be 1 ohm uh, resistor values. Can't read that on the uh, LCD uh, screen here, but they should be 1 ohm a pop. And you can see that, okay, it comes in here, and it goes across here, through onto this contact, and through one uh, the 1 ohm resistor here, and out. So we've got 1. And likewise, if we go to 2, okay, it comes around here, it goes through, and it goes through two series resistors out. So we've got two ohms, and does the same for three and four, like that. And you'll notice on the fifth position here, uh, this resistor is simply uh, shorted out. Okay, so it, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't play any role in this uh, switch uh, position here. It's just completely shorted. But when we go to six, like this, okay, what we're doing here is we're going through this resistor up here, which is not one ohm, but that would be five ohms. I don't even need to read it to know that that's five ohms, but I'm sure you can see that on uh, your glorious 4K high definition there. You're able to uh, read that, and that will be five ohms there, and then it goes through like that. And likewise, five ohms, and that's why they've got the number five next to it like that, to know that you need four one ohm resistors and one 5 ohm resistor. And in the 6th position here, of course, it comes through this resistor, 5 ohms over here, and adds another ohm there for 6 ohms total. 7 ohms, 8 ohms, 9 ohms, and then back to 0, because there's no 10, let alone 11. What a bummer. So that's the benefit of rolling your own uh, PCB solution like this. You can have that weird half-cycle uh, dual-wipe uh, system like that, essentially, you know, it wraps around and, you know, it's it's really uh, quite novel. You can't do that with a normal 10 position uh, switch if you do your own uh, solution like this. So it's really nice. There's fewer resistors, but it does potentially impact uh, the wattage here because let's assume we're in the one ohm position uh, at the moment, whereas uh, let's say we were passing one ohm constant current through this thing, okay? Constant current. That means you get one amp times one ohm, one watt. You'd have one watt dissipation uh, in any of these first four switch positions like this. But once you go to your five ohm position here, your uh, this resistor, this poor five ohm resistor has got one amp flowing through it uh, instead of five separate resistors that you'd get on a normal arrangement. So this has to dissipate five watts. So. Yeah, just be aware of that. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, I like the arrangement. It's cool.
And it's easier to and cheaper to mod too. So there you have it. That was uh, more interesting than I thought it would be. I got this one from a local seller on eBay. So I paid a bit more for it. But, you know, I didn't want to wait the weeks to get it. 25 bucks Aussie or something like that. For the six gang, I would recommend the six gang. They've also got five and four uh, as well. And they might even have uh, smaller ones. But, you know, you really like... If you're going for a decade resistance, get the six gang. So that's actually amazing for the price. I'm going to have to it's, uh, check it over time to see how long um, those contacts and the self-wiping ability of, uh, you know, these switches, how they actually do uh, with time. So, you know, because that copper is going to corrode, of course, but, you know, the self-wiping nature might... I don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see. There's no plating on it whatsoever. So, like, you could potentially take it all off and coat the board yourself, perhaps. But, you know, if you're that keen. Um, but I think this is a good platform to build yourself a decade resistor box. You know, you can just use it as is, but I think putting some higher wattage resistors in there, plenty of room, and you can increase the accuracy uh, to whatever you desire. And I like the switch arrangement it's really positive there's no dicky play around on it or anything like that which upsets like in terms of uh contact like how can you go wrong unbelievable anyway uh if you want one i will uh link them in down below I, it's just amazing for the price unbelievable damn anyway if you enjoyed that video give it a big thumbs up as always discussed down below catch you next time Hello.